Hello. Hmm. A little while ago, I was in sent, informed of um, this person. And um, I, 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 I gotta warn you about this person. Um, this person is very dangerous. Very dangerous. <clears throat> now, my name is Brad. I'm of the Church of the Living God. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is God, my Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? You would call me a Christian. You would call me that. We, who are saved, we don't call ourselves that. Okay? The term Christian is a worldly term affixed to us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by you people of the world. We ourselves never refer to ourselves as that. Okay? And, um, <laughs> this woman, loosely so-called, Roma Army, <laughs> this woman, Claims to be, well, well, let's look. Let's look. What the, what does this person have to say about itself? Advocate for men, podcast, Romas, man, cave, whatever. Okay? This person, this so-called woman, claims to be an advocate for men's rights and is all about speaking against feminism. And I actually gave this person uh, a little while ago an hour and a half of my time. Um, <clears throat> um, that's an hour and a half of my life I cannot reclaim. But I did. Um, as you could see, her videos here are not that long. Um, <laughs> this, this is an advocate for men's rights, and she speaks against feminism. And um, she actually speaks some very true things. But for those of you who, the millions of men who watch her, um, you got to be very careful because... This woman is a textbook Jezebel. This woman is the living, and this, whatever, she is the living example of a Proverbs 7 woman. The living example of it. A Proverbs 7 woman. Okay? Now, I understand that a majority of you who may see this, because I'm going to put this the title of this channel in the title of this video uh, because those of you who are male who come to this um, you are being deceived you are being deceived by a stubborn obnoxious profane woman who is using sexuality to deceive you while all the while saying that she is on your side she is actually herself a feminist. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. She speaks against feminism. Yes, but see, she, as a feminist, herself is exerting her dominion over you because she is defending you. Okay? This is, this is um, reverse psychology at its most simplistic, deadliest form. Okay? You gotta watch out for this person. This person is very, very dangerous. Now, we're going to address a few things. Now, I'm not a Christian, okay? Like I said to you. And when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, God wrote a book. God wrote a book. 
called the Authorized Version of the Scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Okay? If you have a King James Version of the Scriptures, I would invite you to go with me and follow me along to where I go. But for who this video is intended, I sincerely doubt there, there are those of you who even know what this is. There are maybe some of you that do, fine. If you have a copy of the scriptures, I invite you to follow me along, but I'm going to just assume that most of you do not know this, okay? If, I, if you do, please forgive me, all right? Because you are being lulled to sleep by devils like this. Rotten, vile, lying, deceptive little devils like this Roma army, okay? You have to remember something about women, okay? You have to remember something. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, all right? In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25, all right? Miss, whatever your name is, you watching this? I, I, I invite you to go ahead and look this up yourself. You little profane wench. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And see, the feminists who this feminist attacks, they don't like that. They don't like that. Okay? And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them on to Adam to see what he would call them. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Cats, trees, that kind of stuff. Okay? Adam gave them their names. Okay? And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. What does woman mean? What is a woman? With this whole gender nonsense, satanic stuff that's going on nowadays. You know, what is a woman? What is a man? Okay? What is a woman? Well, what does the word woman mean? Let's read verse, verse 23 again. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Woman means, literally, taken out of man. Wo-man. Taken out of man, or of man. That's what woman simply, literally means. Okay? And the feminists who this feminist likes to attack, like to reverse that order. Okay? Feminism tells you what? Okay? Woman, child, pet, man. Okay? And in the realm of this disgusting Christianity with women preachers, which we're not going to address because you don't care about that. 
but uh, these female Christians who are preaching, which they're not supposed to do, they go as far as to say that it's God, woman, child, pet, and then man. Okay? But most of you who are going to see this don't care about that, unfortunately, for you. Okay? So woman means taken out of man or of man. That's what woman means. Okay? Women were created to be a help meet for man. Now, you're a feminist. You don't like that. Okay? You don't like that. You hate that. Okay? And your problem is not with me who is saying that to you. Your problem is with God, whom you're going to give an account to at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So, to be a woman is to be an help meet unto men. Okay? All right. All right, quite simply. And woman means, very simply, taken out of man or of man. That's what a woman is. Okay? Does that mean that you are a second class citizen? Absolutely not. No, because women can bear children. Women have the Matrix, and that's not talking about that stupid um, Hollywood movie. No. Uh, the Matrix, you know, you, you know, I say the word Matrix, what do you think of, right? You think of that stupid movie with the canoe guy, right? No. Matrix is a scriptural term. Matrix is the female reproductive system with the eggs and the stuff like that. The same thing, the same image that the Roman Catholic Trinity is based upon. Okay, if you have questions about that, a link for that will be in the description box. Okay, women can bear children. Women are to be soft, nurturing. Okay, all right. In the book of First Peter, okay, First Peter chapter three. All right. 1 Peter chapter 3. Like I said, I am very aware that the majority of you uh, have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's the way this little devil would want it. But somebody got to warn you about this. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 6. Now, this is addressing in context to wives, but there is also instruction for women on how they are to conduct themselves in a general sense. Okay? Likewise ye, that ye means more than one, by the way. Likewise ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. The way they behave. Okay? And this person who, and I, like I said, I gave this person, and she's got, this is where I spent the majority of the time, and I watched a couple of her videos. <coughs> Uh, we're, we're going to address the inverted crucifix that this person has on her neck here in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I will give this person this credit. I will give this person this credit. This person makes absolutely no bones about that she is even remotely believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, she, she doesn't, she doesn't even tiptoe. She, she, okay, I'll, I'll give her that. I'll give her that, okay, to give her something. And the fact that she has an inverted crucifix on her neck and the tattoo thing and she dresses like a 
four. And and this is, uh, can you see this? This is cute. This is cute, okay? <laughs> right here. Most modern women disgust me. And this woman has an inverted cross tattooed on her neck. And she's wearing a crucifix right there. Oh, yeah, this is this is choice. This is choice, okay? This is choice. All right, but we'll, we'll, we'll address that in a moment, okay? Let's let's get back to some semblance. I mean, let's continue this, okay? Verse two in First Peter chapter three. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear. What does chaste mean? Well, let's keep reading to give you an idea. Who's adorning? Who's adorning? You know, you adorn something, you put it on, that kind of stuff like that, okay? Who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair. Plating the hair, meaning making all kinds of fancy schmancy things in the hair and stuff like that, okay? And of wearing of gold, you know, all this fancy schmancy jewelry. Or putting on of apparel. Mm. And apparently, and this person, uh, as far as putting on apparel, does her best to wear uh, uh, the least amount of apparel that she can. Okay? And, uh, you know, that vile, I mean, and, and look at this. Look at these shorts. We're not going to... We are going to listen a bit to a video where we are. But it's very hard to find any video or anything where this person does not use profanity. This woman is a vile, profane woman. She is herself a feminist. Because she is sticking up for men. She uses flattery. And we're going to look at a very good example of this woman. Uh, she uses flattery to put off this thing that she is for you. She got, There are a couple of these shorts where she goes like, refers to as she's speaking on to a man. She's like, hey king, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that. I'm not going to find her that video where she's like, hey king. What are you doing today? Like she refers to as if this was her boyfriend. She refers to him as king. I'm going to look at a very good example of that. This, this woman is a devil. Okay, She makes no bones about it. I'll give her that. I'll give her that. She makes no bones about it. But look, man. Man. You need to get away from this woman. This woman is deceiving you. She is using sexuality to deceive you in your mind. She's using flattery. She says she's taking up for you. But as she says she is taking up for you, she is putting on to you that you cannot do it yourself because you need her to do it for you. And all the while calling you king. It's a form of feminism. Okay? All right? This woman herself is a feminist. Okay? Hey, Miss Roma. Funny, take off the A and put an E on there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Miss Roma. You're a feminist. You are a feminist. Yeah. Okay? And God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father, God is a man. And she is rebelling against God openly by the tattoo thing. But more on that in a second, okay? So let's continue. Here in Scripture, a woman is said to, in verse 3, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be that the hidden man of the heart... Now, the hidden man of the heart is a reference on to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And in order for that to happen, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness, 
take accountability for the fact that you put Jesus on the cross, that he died because of you, and you better have fear of the Lord because unless he save you, he's going to send you to hell. Okay? And in that broken and contrite state, having fear of the Lord, call on his name, and may he save you. Okay? That is salvation. All right? Questions about that? Let us reason together, you and I. Okay? All right? But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Yes, of great price. See, God does not hate women. God made woman for man, and woman can bring in children into this world. Okay? Women have a very special place with our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And see, a lot of you are deceived because when you think of Catholicism, uh, Christianity, you're thinking of Catholicism. Because what are you told about Christ? That God loves you, right? Unconditionally. But yet, God is going to send you to hell where you're going to burn forever in a lake of fire with smoke and torment, right? But he loves you. And, okay, think about that. It's like, wait a minute. God loves me unconditionally. But he's going to send me to hell. But he loves me. See, that's not the truth, dear friend. The love of God is there for you. But see, the love of God is there for you at the cross. Okay? That means that in order to have God's love, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness, thinking that you're a good person and that you can save yourself. You have to have, take responsibility for, yes, God who died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Okay? Jesus is God the Father. Okay? If you are very interested in that, uh, who is on the cross, you know, that will be in the description box for you if you are curious. Okay? If you are curious. But, uh, yes, Jesus who died 2,000 years ago, died because of you, died for you. And see, if you don't go to him the way that he has prescribed for us today, then his love is not for you. His wrath is for you. Okay? And see, you are told by Christianity that God loves you, but then you have brain enough in your head to be like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. You're telling me God loves me unconditionally, but yet if I don't do what he says, or however you like to phrase it, he's going to send me to hell forever. That don't make sense. And you're right doesn't make sense. God's love is there for you, to be had of you at Calvary. But see, it requires the breaking of your self-righteousness. Okay? Like I said, you have questions about that, there will be links in the description box for you. Okay? But see, a woman is to be of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. Okay? This... <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, you're, you're looking... I mean, this, this woman is so profane and vile, and she is an enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ. She is the exact opposite of everything that the Lord values of great price that is in a woman, that is supposed to be in a woman. Okay? All right? Men, you don't want this woman sticking up for you. All right? Verse 5. For after this manner in old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, 
whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. And you might be saying right now, some of you women who may see this, or even this devil, and this devil, Miss Roma, whoever you are, you're, you're aware of this. You are aware of this. You're not ignorant. You're not ignorant. Okay? You can't be this big of a devil and not know any inkling of truth. Okay? That's what makes a person like this so dangerous. Verse 7 here in 1 Peter chapter 3. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Women are weaker than men. But apparently, you know, nowadays you've got these MMA fighting women, the equivalent of ancient Roman female gladiators. You have women who have muscle arms bigger than men and you have women out there who can beat men up yeah bodybuilding women it's grotesque it's grotesque okay it is grotesque women are the weaker vessel that's not i don't say that god says that I don't like that, do you? I don't say that. God says that. The woman is the weaker vessel. The woman was taken out of man, made for man. And the woman is to be of a meek and quiet spirit. Okay? All right? And if you want more about how a woman should be, Go ahead on your own time and read Proverbs chapter 31, okay? And note that the first couple of verses in Proverbs 31 are addressing us as men, okay? All right? But likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Okay, and then again, there is this also this thing that men see women as objects, as pieces of meat to be controlled. That's you know like the and even this uh, person mentions that vile Andrew Tate. Okay, all right, this is extremism here that we're talking about. We as man, okay, are to have respect for women. We as man, as husbands, are to love our wives as ourselves. As Christ gave himself for the church, the body of Christ. As we as men, as husbands, unto our wives, are to do for our wives. We are to love our wives as we love ourselves. Because we are one flesh. A lot of people, when they think of the one flesh thing, they think of sexuality. And yes, that encompasses that. But, you know, as you might have noticed, I am a married man. Okay? My wife and I are one flesh. Okay? All right? Yes, that is a reference on to the sexual nature, the joy of sexuality in the marriage bed, yes, but it is deeper than that. We are one flesh, okay? You go after my wife, you're going after me. You go after me, you're going after my wife. We are one flesh. That's how that works, see? Okay? Not that she is a piece of property to be owned and controlled because I am a saved man. And the scriptures tell me that I am to give honor unto my wife. Okay? All right. But now we're going to attempt. Now, I got to find this because, like I said, now, first of all, before we do this, okay, uh, the, the tattoo thing on her neck. Actually, it'll be better to address this with this one video. Um, Oh, where is that video? Uh, not the pick me. Here it is. Okay, now we're not going to. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on, no. Don't. I don't. We don't have this one. Kanika Bacta, the day you decide to work, will do them for you. 
so you can do what? What? Not I'm ask. sorry, people. I'm sorry. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. I've been a men's rights advocate for three years now, and two Factor. things have been made the abundantly what? clear what? to me. Women don't like me. Women don't like men. When most women find out that what I advocate for men, I get one of two comments. What rights don't men have? Or, you're just a pick me girl. Uh, Alright, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Uh, gotta really pay attention, because, like I said, this woman is very profane. I don't know what just happened there. Beg your pardon, but we're going to look at this video. Now, first of all, four words every man should hear, okay? First of all, I want to address the tat neck tattoo thing. Now, some of you are like, well, Brad, we're not supposed to judge on the outward appearance. Don't judge me. Don't judge me, okay? Tattoos are evil. Tattoos are evil. Okay? Tattoos are not okay in the sight of God. Um, there are those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you call them Christians, who have tattoos. That peop Those people got tattoos when they were lost. They were ignorant. Ignorant means to not know. Okay, that's what that means. Willful ignorance, not wanting to know on purpose, is stupidity. Okay? Uh, a lot of people, my wife, my wife has tattoos. She got those tattoos when she was lost. She did not know, okay? Tattoos are against God, and obviously this woman who is dressed like a whore, she, I mean, but this woman has the neck tattoos and the, okay, let's, let's hear what God has to say about tattoos. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 28, okay, verse 28 in Leviticus, chapter 19, ye shall not make, ye means plural, more than one, ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, comma, cutting in your flesh for the dead was a sign of mourning in paganism. Uh, you might have heard, you might not know, uh, you may know, uh, putting ashes on your head and, or also east, eating ashes was also a sign of mourning, okay? So to cut yourself for the dead was a sign of mourning, okay? And there's a comma there, comma, okay? Nor print any marks upon you I am the Lord. Ah, that's talking about tattoos. Now, there are these stupid Christians out there who will come to this and say that it's for the dead. You're not supposed to print any marks upon you for the dead. Ye, plural, ye means more than one, shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, comma, okay, comma, Okay? Comma. There's a comma there. All right? Meaning someone died to mourn for them. You cut yourself as a sign of mourning, which was a pagan ritualistic practice. Okay? You're not supposed to do that. Nor. See that word nor. Nor. Print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Now see right here, dear friend. Right here. That is what God has said. You hear this? You are no longer ignorant. When you stand before the great white throne of judgment and you're tatted up to the moon, you have heard the truth now. So you are no longer ignorant. You know. Ignorant means not knowing. You now know that God does not want you to have tattoos. Now, you might say, well, that's not for today. Oh, what, you rightly divide the word of truth, huh? What does that mean? Never mind, okay? Uh, any questions about that? Look up on the channel here, rightly dividing, all right? But you might say, well, Jesus doesn't care about that. You go to Jesus broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, 
taking responsibility that it's your fault that he died. And in fear of him, you call upon his name and he save you. Okay? If you have tattoos, yes, you can be saved because you did that in ignorance. Okay? You did it in ignorance. Okay? God is not going to turn you away, dear friend, because you have tattoos. No. No. Okay? No. He is not. God does not want you to have tattoos. But if you got tattoos and you didn't know that God was against that, it's like, well, I, I didn't know that you were against that. You were ignorant. You didn't know. Now you do. Now you do. Now you do. Now the danger is on your head. Okay? If you have tattoos, God can save you. God can save anybody. You just have to go to him on his terms, not your own. And then you have these Christians who say that tattoos right there is meaning for the dead. There's a comma and it says, Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Okay? All right? You know, in the Holocaust, I, I heard this from a Jewish person and it was the best thing that the best way to hear it. They put tattoos on the Jews in the Holocaust because they were treated like cattle. But they also did that in direct defiance of Leviticus 19.28. They printed marks upon them. In the Holocaust, they would put their number right here because they were herded to the death camps as cattle. And today, tattoos are looked at as a thing of beauty. Hey, Roma, why don't you go find yourself a woman who survived the Holocaust, who has a tattoo on her arm? Why don't you go talk to her? You go into her with your, your neck tattoos. Okay? You know what? The Lord could even save this Roma herself. Roma. The Lord can save you. He can. But the problem is, I think, with you, woman, is that you have gone past that point of no return. There ain't no way that you can claim you're ignorant when you are, number one, Put on your neck tattoos and you have a brazen inverted cross on your neck. You can't tell me that you haven't heard this before. Okay? And that you haven't heard that God would rather a woman be of a meek and quiet spirit. You can't tell me that you haven't heard that before. Okay? See, guys, men, this is what makes this woman so dangerous. Okay? She is in open defiance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, but, all right, now here, we're going to only hear a, a little of this, and then we're going to stop, because this woman, I mean, uses profanity. Ugh. But check this out. Now, check out the flattery that she's using. Okay, check this out. Only, so gentlemen, I'm so sorry. You might not want to stay for this. I'm about to release a whole bunch of your secrets. Four words that all men want to hear from their special lady, but they'll never admit it. Hey, you're finally awake. You look... You see that? You see that inverted cross on her neck? And the big... Look, look at that picture! Look at that picture! We're going to be reading Proverbs chapter 7, by the way. Um, <laughs> look at that picture. Look at that picture. Ah! Men, please do not trust this woman. Please do not listen to this woman. She is deceiving you. Ah! Let's continue. look nice today. Hey, guess what? You make me so happy. Hey, babe. Want a head scratch? You want my fries? Hey, I ordered pizza. Dinner ideas? Um, all you can eat? Babe, I'm bored. Let's play Mario Kart. It's gonna be okay. Can I hug you? If you realized 
Damn, I think it's been a fat minute since I've said something sweet or complimented my man. Take any of those things and uh, you might just make his whole life. Thank you. Hello, Roma Army. It All right, that's enough. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. Now, some of the stuff that she was talking about was true, but you know what she did? You see that? She uses her femininity and sexuality to do what? To flatter. To flatter. In the book of 1 Kings, the first book of 1 Kings, chapter 21, there is a woman in history whose name was Jezebel. Jezebel, who is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Jezebel was a very evil, vile, wicked woman. In 1 Kings chapter 21, Okay. Oh, here, let's let's go back to, where was that? Where was that? There it is. There it is. Here, let's let's play that. You make me so happy. Where was that? Hey, when, babe. Uh, where she want was, a head uh, scratch? You want right my fries? Here. Hey, you make yeah, me so happy. Head. You look nice today. There, <laughs> there. <laughs> I want that. I want you to have this to look at. Okay. But in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 10. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. King Ahab, one of the worst kings in the history of Israel, who was controlled and manipulated by, her, by uh, his wife, Jezebel. Jezebel, okay? Jezebel, who was probably a fabulous, gorgeous-looking woman. But she manipulated and controlled her weak, cowardly husband. Okay? And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I, might, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or... If it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give thee of the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Now, what's happening here? Ahab, because he didn't get his way, was a little sissy boy. And he went, oh, and he went and cried and turned his head on his bed. It's like, oh. Ahab was a wimp. Ahab was a wimp. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. A wimp who can control armies. A coward that, if you were to read, continue reading in the book of 1 Kings, would have another king come with him to go to battle, and he himself would disguise himself so that people would think that the other king that went to war with him was him. Okay? Ahab was a piece of work. But Ahab was a coward, and Ahab was a wimp. And I would have said that to his face. Okay? But now, here's the dejected man. Okay? But along comes who? But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Okay? Jezebel, what's wrong, honey? You look nice today smiling at you with that inverted, look at that, okay, smiling at you. You look nice today. Hmm? And he said unto her, because I spake unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. <laughs> Ahab was a coward. Yes. Now, look at what Jezebel says. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, 
Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? In several of her shorts, this woman, yeah, I'm not going to find it for you, okay? But if she watches this, she'll acknowledge it, okay? She's like, hey, king, what are you doing today? Flattery. Flattery. Okay? Flattery. All right? Well, you might be saying, well, hey, Matt, Brad, what's wrong with that? She's manipulating you. She is controlling you, people. What this devil is doing is covert feminism. Okay? While openly addressing open fem I have more respect for an open feminazi than this person because this one is doing it covertly. Okay? But, see, this Roma army is telling you that you are incapable of doing it yourself so she, in her sexuality, is controlling you. This woman is a Jezebel. This woman is a Jezebel, okay? And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise, eat bread. You want my fries? I ordered us pizza. And let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezebel. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry, king. I'll do it for you. Jezebel, who in history is known as probably the worst woman ever. <laughs> A type of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. She did the speaking for Ahab, her husband, the king. Hey, king. Let's go to this, this video I watched. I, hey, Roma, I gave you an hour and a half of my life to watch your filth. You owe me. <laughs> So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Hi, King. Let's get going today. Come on. Come on, you. Oh, you smell bad like I do. Yeah. Yeah. And sealed them with his seal. And sent the letters on to the elders and to the nobles that were in the, his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. And then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Because of a Jezebel. And now, Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. Okay? Proverbs chapter 7. You know, you know what, dear friends? Um, you've been subjected to this enough. Okay? You've been subjected to this enough. There. No more of that. No more of that. That Roma army. Proverbs chapter 7. See, and that individual in that video, if you were to watch it, um, who bore my name, but I'm, my name is Brad, actually Brad O, but my name is Brad, not Bradley or Bradford, okay? It's Brad, all right? But that, that man, that Brad in that video who had a daughter and whatnot, and she was, you know, Roma, the, the harlot that she looks like, like she's on that guy's side, no. Proverbs chapter 7, verses 6, unto the close of the chapter. Hey, get a copy of the scriptures. Follow me along with this. But like I said, I'm assuming most of you don't. So please pay attention. This is, number one, 
talking about the Roman Catholic Church and all her whorish daughters. But this Roma is a living example of this. Okay? For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. And according to scripture, we learn that understanding is departing from evil. Okay? Job chapter 28, verse 28. And he said unto man, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So this young man, who is void of understanding, is what? Had, was not departing from evil. Okay? So, you, man, who are drawn to this vile woman, are you departing from evil? What is evil, right? <laughs> Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Oh, Miss Roma Army. Look, wearing all those low-cut things, showing things that only a husband should see. Speaking in the soft things, you know, the soft voice. Using the power of seduction that she has. Okay? That woman's a Jezebel. Okay? But she wearing the attire of a harlot, showing off her body, okay? Because she's got all those wonderful neck tats that she wants to rub in your face and on her fingers and stuff like that, okay? And that kid, the older you get, you know, we, our spirit and soul, even yours, your spirit and soul is housed in the sagging skin suit, okay? If you get to live into your 60s, it's going to sag down, girl. Yeah, yeah. She is loud and stubborn. Loud and stubborn. Where we have already looked at that God wants women to be of a meek and quiet spirit. But someone who is contrary to the Lord is loud and stubborn. Like Miss Roma is. Her feet abide not in her house. Yes, a woman is to be a keeper at home. Yes, yes. And look at what has happened to women when they go to take on the roles of men. Okay? All right. Now is she without. Now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Now that is also a reference onto all the churches that you see of how Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, the mother of harlots, is everywhere and spread herself because Roman Catholicism is a whore. Okay, the horror of Babylon, okay? Uh, Revelation chapter 17, if any of you are curious. We are going to look at that here before this video is over, okay? But that's talking about Roman Catholicism. But that Miss Roma there fits that, embodies that perfectly. Okay? So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, used her sexuality, used the high king. You make me so happy. No, yes, yes, that would, see, and this is the vile evil that that woman is doing, okay? Yes, 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 that would be nice if women would do that for men. But also for men to have honor onto their wives, to honor women as they are not a piece of meat, which pornography teaches you. Pornography teaches you to undress women when you look at them. Pornography teaches you that women are pieces of meat to just be used. Okay? All right? And see, Miss Roma plays into that. 
she in one of the videos that I saw, she even herself admitted that she watches pornography. Roma, whatever your name is, you're a devil, you are sick, the Lord rebuke you. It would and now see if a woman like that were to be saved. Wow. Wow. But see, a woman like that. She's not ignorant of the things of God. She isn't. Uh, that woman probably has never read the scriptures in her life. Wouldn't doubt it. But see, that level of evil, you have to be aware of at least some of the semblance of truth of God in order to be that deceptive. Okay? That's usually how that works. You cannot be that vile and evil and be totally ignorant of what God says. You can't be. It doesn't work that way. Okay? But, let's continue. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent, defiant face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. I'm on your side, king. I know how to treat you. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Dude, it will scare the hell out of you that that woman claims to be an advocate for men. That is like, <laughs> no, no thanks. No, 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 thanks. no, thank you. I don't want you sticking up for me. No, thank you. You, you, you can go to hell. Okay? I'll scare the hell out of you. I'll scare the hell out of you. And all the while putting you down because you have a harlot like that sticking up for you. You have a Jezebel who's like, don't worry, honey. I'll do it for you because you're too weak and incapable of doing it yourself. Don't worry. I'll get it for you. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. Mm. With carved works with fine linen of Egypt. And that means for us today, things of the world. Dressing provocatively, showing off the, the, the things that a husband should see. The less, the better for that harlot. Brad, you're being really mean to her. That woman is damning people to hell. She is deceiving men who she claims that she's standing up for. Okay? I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamons. And here's what she does. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. <laughs> For the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. Now this is, of course, reference that the Lord, you know, the, his body is on earth, but he himself is not on earth. But for this context, the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. Men can't defend themselves, so you have to have someone like Roma do it for you. Well, all the while talking. And she does say, she does bash um, open feminism than what I have seen. She does. I'll, I'll give her that. But see what she is doing. She is using feminism to fight feminism. <laughs> okay? You fight fire with fire, fire wins. Okay? <laughs> you don't overcome evil with evil. <laughs> okay? And, and see her seductiveness. Come. Let us take our fill of love into the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Forced him? You gotta remember verse six. This person, or uh, verse seven, 
A young man void of understanding. Dear friend, fellow man, you know why you're being taken by this woman? Because you have no understanding. Okay? Go to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your father. Okay? He created you. He has given you life today. He is the one who will be there for you. He is the one that can cure you of your sickness. And what sickness is that? That you're a sinner, a lost sinner going to hell. Okay? He is the answer. He is to whom you must go to. Okay? He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? He is the way. He is your answer. Okay? All right? But see, because you love the things of this world, and this woman is using her sexuality and her fair speech to deceive you, you having no understanding departing from evil, you're walking right into a trap, son. You're walking right into a trap. Trap of the devil. Roma army. The devil wears Rome. And because you are downtrodden and not looking to the Lord Jesus Christ, but looking to the devil and what he offers you, he goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. You get taken by this woman's sorcery, your life is in danger. Hearken unto me. Now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not... Thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And you see, Proverbs chapter 7, dear friend, is talking about a harlot. But who is the mother of harlots? Who does Miss Roma actually work for? Now, like I said, that, that Roma there makes absolutely no bones about it. She doesn't even, she won't even pretend to say that she... She's not even a Christian, okay? I'll give her that. But see, but see, she does the works of her father, the devil, okay? She does her works of the father of her father, the devil. And you read about that in John, the book of John, before we go to Revelation chapter 17, okay? In the book of John chapter 7, okay? Verses 43 and verse 44. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. Roma, you are of your father the devil. Okay? And the devil's church is Roman, Catholic, Roman Catholicism. You, I'm sure you don't purport in any ways to be religious. But see, you are serving Satan, your father, the devil, Roma. You might as well be a Catholic. 
Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Revelation chapter 17. Now, Revelation chapter 17 is specifically talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? All right? But when you see someone who embodies all of that brazenly, Reven Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And these waters are likened on the people and stuff like that. Okay, you read about that in verse 15, if you're curious. Okay? With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. This is talking about Roman Catholicism. But made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Um, you watch that Roma. I mean, I give that woman an hour and a half of her of my time. Okay, watching. Okay, so you know, to it's like, what does this woman do? What is this woman about? Okay, she's very seductive. Okay, she casts a spell, more or less. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that she's a witch. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Okay, but she uses the tone of her voice, the movements of her body, the less clothing that she wears. She is profane. She makes a sailor blush, okay? And she targets weak men, weak meaning downcast, dejected, at the end of their rope, okay? Men who ought to be going to the Lord, but yet want to be soothed over by a Jezebel harlot like Roma. Okay? So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And like I said, uh, the, the video that we watched was one of the cleanest language-wise, okay? All right? I think somewhere in there she even used profanity, okay? It, it was hard to find something where that woman didn't use any profanity, okay? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And verse 4 is specifically talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And see, this Roma here, this Roma here, yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, where'd I go? <laughs> there I am. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, and now I'm upside down, huh? <laughs> Isn't that something? But yeah, this uh, Roma here, yeah, 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 this Roma here. <laughs> how, do I, how do I fix that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, one second, please. Yeah, sorry. That Roma there, she's doing the work of her father, the devil, and deceiving so many of you. Please beware of this woman. She is not on your side. She is against you. Okay? And where you ought to be going on to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to a harlot. Beware, people. Beware. Okay? Beware. That is going to be it for this video. You have questions about some of the things I said to you? Links will be for you in the description box. Okay? So, beware. Beware of covert feminists like this. And hey, Roma. 
Yeah, I said a lot of harsh things about you. But you know what, Roma? Lord can save you. But see, you got to be broken of your self-righteousness. And from what I've seen, of everything that I've seen of you that I have seen, You have all the signs of someone who has gone past the point of no return. I pity you, woman. And I pity you for what you're going to have to give an account for at the great white throne of judgment. Thank you for watching this if you do. We'll see you in the next video.